Hi there, I'm Lucia Subadin, Technical Lead for the Cortex Framework, and today I will show you how to deploy the data foundation from our Git repository. In this video, we assume you and the team running this deployment with you are familiar with what the data foundation is, and you're also proficient in some topics and tools in the Google Cloud Platform beforehand. These topics are general understanding of Google Cloud concepts and platform, such as usage of the console and Cloud Shell, identity and authentication management, or IAM, service accounts, and Cloud Build. You and somebody in your team should have intermediate understanding of SQL, Cloud Composer, and BigQuery, and ideally some readability of Python. Last but not least, you or somebody in your team should have some understanding of functional concepts of SAP. This will be especially handy towards the end of the deployment. If these topics are new to the team running the deployment, there are some good materials listed in the description of this video, so the rest of the content is easy to understand. After this video, you will learn about the deployment of the Data Foundation, the prerequisites, different components, and where to look if something goes wrong. Let's get ready for our deployment. We can now get started with how data flows from the different systems into BigQuery, specifically from SAP. The Cortex framework is designed under the principle of openness and should work with any tool that can replicate raw data from SAP stables. An example of this is the BigQuery Direct Connector that runs on SLT, which you can find more about in the links under this video. New records and any changes to them will land in a dataset that we'll call raw landing for now. With BigQuery, an ELT or append always pattern is preferred. This means that instead of merging or upserting records every time there is a change, we insert a new one and merge the records afterwards. Cloud Composer can schedule this operation, and you can deploy automated scripts to process these changes as part of the Cortex Data Foundation. We will dig into this later, but for now, the results of those scripts containing the latest updated record in a table will go into a dataset that we will call CDC Processed, where CDC stands for Change Data Capture. Finally, we have a layer that has the business logics and models that will be consumed by end users. These are tapping into the dataset that has the latest version of the truth. Some customers choose to have only this data set available to their end users and separate the more technical data sets from the data set that are user facing into two different projects. We will call these source and target projects and this separation is optional. There are alternatives to this deployment and these depend on your requirements. For example, if the tool you're using to replicate data does a merge or upser operation every time an update is replicated into BigQuery, you do not need to generate the scripts to process the change data capture. This removes the need for two datasets and the scripts for Cloud Composer. You could also control access to the reporting directly with permissions to the dataset and not want to create authorized views to split the data into different projects. That would mean the source and target projects will be the same. To recap the parameters you will need for deployment, you will need to identify the dataset where data is replicated, the dataset with the latest records, the project where these two datasets are, the datasets that are user-facing, and the project where these datasets are. If you have a tool that processes change data capture and do not need the Cloud Composer scripts, you can use the same BigQuery dataset for raw and CDC and set the flag to generate CDC scripts to false. If you currently do not have a replication tool or would like to see just what the flow looks like, you have a parameter to replicate test data. During deployment, you can set this flag to true and the tables will get automatically created and filled with sample data. Now that we know the basic parameters and what the implementation will look like, let's clone the repository to start customizing options to fit our needs. Navigate to the repository for the data foundation and get the right URL for cloning. After a git clone, add the recurse submodules flag so you get all of the available content and wait until the clone process is done. 
Now that you have the repository, you can go into that directory and you will find the readme files with these same instructions on text. Let's move to the next topic and explore the configuration if you want to take advantage of the change data capture processing scripts. The change data capture processing scripts rely on basically two pieces of information the timestamp when the record was replicated into BigQuery and the original operation flag. This will allow the script to pick the latest record and understand if it needs to perform an insert, an update, or a delete in the target table. In the repository, you will find the source or SRC folder that contains one directory called SAPCDC. You will see two YAML files, one called setting and one called sets, that we will configure now. Start by opening setting.yaml, which contains the list of tables and the frequency for the changed data capture to run. You can choose to generate a real-time view or the scripts for Cloud Composer or Apache Airflow to merge the changes as a batch job. For a directed acyclic graph or DAG from Apache Airflow to be generated, input one of the many supported options for scheduling. These are listed as part of Airflow's documentation. For a runtime view, replace the scheduling option with runtime. If you want to generate a script or a view for a table that is not listed, you can include it here for the script to pick it up and generate the change data capture processing for you. This also applies to custom tables or Z tables. The only prerequisite is that the table DD03L that contains metadata for your tables is replicated from your SAP system before running the deployment. You can see how each template will be filled in the folder SRC template SQL. You will find the merge operation in the CDC SQL template. This is where you could also customize the fields considered when doing the merging if they're not called record stamp, operation flag, and is deleted. The template for the runtime query view in that same folder will scan the table considering the same fields as the batch DAGs, but will not produce a merge operation. This is useful when you need to get changes in as close to real time as possible, and as they are replicated by the integration tool. But this operation can also be quite expensive. If you look into the template DAG folder, you will find another template called DAG SQL. Here's where you can customize specific parameters to your Airflow instance, like the path to DAX or the name for the BigQuery connection. To recap, you can now adjust the fields used for merging and scanning for the latest records. You can also update the templates to match your instance of Cloud Composer or Apache Airflow. You can modify the frequency or add tables for the script to pick up and configure the flattening of hierarchies resulting from sets, all of which will work as long as you have replicated table from DD03L so the script can pick up the metadata from your instance of SAP. If you're using test data, you can optionally leave these files as they are. For non-SAP data sources, check the documentation for each specific source. Now that we understand our target deployment and have configured change data capture processing, let's make sure we have all the information and prerequisites to execute our deployment. You will need a storage bucket for the deployment process to download the generated DAG scripts. I recommend you create a new bucket specifically for this. I also recommend using a new separate bucket for the cloud build logs, but this is optional. Make sure the bucket is in the same region as the BigQuery datasets where you will run the deployment. This is the part where I see most errors originate from. Permissions. Permissions will vary depending on the projects you're using, if you're running this with your own user or through a service account using impersonation, whether you are using more than one project and what your GCS buckets look like too. You will find the links to the relevant documentation in the readme file, and if something goes wrong, I strongly recommend you take some time to understand those. The permissions that I am listing here are for a user that is not an owner or an editor in the project and executes without impersonating a service account. 
make sure the Cloud Build service account, which you will find in the settings in Cloud Build, has storage admin permissions on the buckets for DAX and for logs. It will also need a BigQuery editor and job user in any project in which it will create tables and datasets. Lucky for you, we have a small script that will check the basic permissions that are in place so issues are fixed ahead of the deployment. Start by cloning the Mando Checker repository, changing into the directory, and feed the project ID, the bucket for DAX, and the bucket for logs as parameters. You can copy this command from the readme of this repository. If everything is configured correctly, the build will be a success. Otherwise, the error will tell you what authorization needs to be revised. You can check the log in the build console itself if you have enough permissions. With all the permissions in place, let's gather the parameters and start a deployment. These are the parameters we've been gathering since the beginning of the video, but let's refresh them all together. First, the source project where the data is replicated and CDC processing happens the target project where the user-facing datasets will be. In my example, I will use the same project for both as this separation is entirely optional. The raw dataset is where a tool like the BigQuery connector for SAP will replicate data. The CDC process dataset is where the results of the change data capture scripts will land. If this is covered by your replication tool, the raw and the CDC datasets will be the same. These datasets need to exist before running the deployment. If you're using test data, create the two empty datasets beforehand. The reporting dataset is where the user-facing models will be. The machine learning dataset will have the BigQuery views that run BigQML. If these datasets do not exist, the deployment tool will create them for you with the name you specify here. Finally, we have the GCS bucket for logs coming from the cloud build process and another bucket where the scripts for the DAX will be downloaded. There are some optional additional parameters that have some default values on. The beauty of having an open source repository is that you can go and check how these parameters are used under the hood if you're curious. For test data, you can leave these parameters the way they are. This is the moment we've been waiting for. I will be using test data for my deployment and the same project for source and target. You can see my datasets are created and ready to be populated by tables and my reporting and machine learning user-facing datasets have names with unicorns. Finally, the two buckets, one for logs and one for DAGs, which are also created and have the right permissions. Since I want test data and CDC to be generated, I also set the CDC flag to true. I could also use the same name for the CDC and raw dataset and skip the generation of CDC scripts if I'm not interested in seeing them. We're now ready to start the deployment. I'll go back into the repository we cloned earlier that has my specific configuration for CDC and issue the gcloud build submit command. You can follow the progress from Cloud Build if you have enough permissions. You will see the tables and test data are getting populated. This will be followed by the generation of CDC scripts and flattening of hierarchies. And finally, the reporting and ML views will be generated. A deployment can take about an hour and a half, but thanks to the magic of video edition, we can skip past to a successful build. If everything went okay, you will see the three steps are green. If any of the build processes failed, the step that fails will be in error. To make issues related to views easier to troubleshoot, each view is built in a separate build process. This is why you will see a parent build triggers some smaller builds for each view. When there is an error, you can click on that specific view to check the issue and fix it. After deployment, if you chose to deploy test data and CDC, you will see those datasets have been populated. You will also find the views that were built successfully in the user-facing datasets like the reporting one or the machine learning one. 
I hope this has been useful and your deployment is successful. Please reach out through the GitHub issues with any feedback or comments you may have. We'll be happy to help. Also, check out the documentation for all of the use cases you can deploy on top of the Data Foundation.